I started in Mountain Ash office, um, in, I think it was 2003, and it was a very much smaller office than we're in today, and it was in the old library. There was just, uh, I'm not, I can't remember how many exactly, but it was a small staff team, and it was a, a great sense of community there in the office. Uh, a few volunteers that used to come in most days, and um, of course the the, um, the manager and, and all the support team were there as well. So it was a, a lovely bunch. Well, the office that I started at, the building was obviously similar to this because in those days it was rather tough. Citizens Advice Bureau it hadn't been the merger with uh, Cunnan. Citizens Advice, uh, but in addition there was number 18, Geshe Wastad Road, so you, uh, you had to cross the road sometimes with clients when the traffic was heavy and it could be quite quite perilous sometimes, uh, but, but the layout of the office w was very similar to what it is now. Yes. Right, well I started in the um, Cannon Valley office back in 2005, I was in the old library on Dufferin Road I think it was, in Mountain Ash, um, it was dark. <laughs> it had bars on the win the windows. Um, it didn't necessarily give itself off as mostly inviting of places from the out the outside. But once you went in, there was an atmosphere that was warm, that was welcoming, that, that really put me at ease as a volunteer from the minute I walked in through the door. And it, a lot of that was down to, to the people that were there, the sort of culture that that worked there in the background more than necessarily the, the bars and the, the darkness. <laughs>
and I was using the not current database we've got but the previous advice database before that. Um, my role now and for the last two years has been as the chief executive of Citizens Advice Ron Buchan and Taff. Um, not a job I thought I'd be doing when I first started as a, vol a, vol a volunteer. Um, my intention was to do a quick two or three months, gain some experience, bulk out my CV and then move on. But I just fell in love with what we do and for the last 14, almost 15 years I've been around. Well, my role was an interesting role in the sense I set up a link with uh, the University of Glamorgan, as it was then known as Law School, with the Citizens Advice Bureau. The head of the school at that time was a Professor Michael Stuckey, who was a trustee of the Bureau, and he suggested I come and meet Erica Helps, who at the time was the chief executive of the uh, Bureau. Um, so in some ways I was the link person between the university law school and the CAB but my defined CAB role was I was a specialist employment and equality advisor uh, so I used to be here on Monday mornings when the students were here uh, and occasionally students helped me out with my casework although that was exceptional uh, but uh, the uh, bureau staff could liaise with me if there were any issues to do with the students so it was sort of convenient I suppose to have me around at the same time as the students uh, but the employment and the equality uh, special, advi special advisor role I found very stimulating uh, we took cases to bureau uh, we won a direct discrimination case I remember which I never tired of telling people for about the next six months because only three percent of direct discrimination cases are successful uh, but we won one in in the tribunal uh, so we were very very pleased with that uh, and we had a number of other victories without that, that was particularly particularly pleasing and and it was, it was very satisfying for me to sort of um, complement the, the CAB's existing role by doing representational work. I'm currently chair of the trustee board. It's a role I took over nearly three years ago. It wasn't that long after I became a trustee, actually. Um, the chair at the time was having to give up because of different uh, personal reasons. And he contacted me and said, would I be interested in carrying out the role? I said I thought there were other people on the board who were far more experienced than me and perhaps he should go to them first. But he seemed to think that I was uh, more than capable of carrying out the role and I ended up getting uh, elected into the role of chair. And I really enjoy the role. Um, steep learning curve for me and I'm still learning, but uh, I do really enjoy the role. Uh, definitely helped my personal development. I was coming through quite a traumatic period of my life. Um, I'd been out of work for about four years and my first sort of entry back into work in life was volunteering with the Citizens Advice Bureau. It helped with my self-esteem, uh, it helped with my motivation, um, it helped with my self-worth to be honest. Um, I started off admin on a very sort of um, lower level, if you like. Um, then I started to pick up uh, more work. Um, I started to become the staff rep. So I started to attend trustee meetings. Um, I then became the health and safety uh, worker, which meant I went on training. Um, and eventually when I did get employment with another agency, um, I was asked to become a trustee of the Citizens Advice Bureau. And that was a very, very interesting. It's our beliefs and balances. Before I was with uh, volunteering, I had been doing nothing for the last past few months. It uh, got some more routine into my, my life. It's um, definitely got a bit more self confidence, especially answering the telephones now. And a lot of uh, getting new people to get new people as well. Um, I would never have dreamt of uh, dealing with the public face to face before coming to uh, Citizens Advice or working in a call centre environment which is my first uh, experience um, or public speaking which I'm also doing when I'm delivering training so quite a significant uh, impact on my uh, personal development, me personally and uh, obviously picked up uh, a lot of good interview skills. The enormous amount of knowledge that I have gained personally about things that I suppose if you don't work in this sort of environment, there are things you don't really 
think about too much. Um, the, the, from the simplest things that people have that worry them to, I mean, major issues. Um, and it was the most educational 17 years of my life, I have to say that. The, the years I spent in this bureau, um, I probably learned more in that time than in any other job I've ever worked. Um, when I started with um, Citizens Advice, I was obviously in university. I'd never had a job um, in an office before, so it helped me really to understand how to, you know, professional, how to work professionally, how to work within an office. Um, I'd never really had much contact with the public either, so it helped me uh, confidence-wise in terms of dealing with the public. Um, confidence in being able to research things obviously I was in university and I think as part of being a volunteer it helped me gain confidence and I can research advice quite quickly for clients um, I'm able to kind of research and help me with my university work obviously I've been here a long time been here nearly 50 well nearly 15 years um, so I've never really left um, I've kind of worked through different sort of departments within the office so I was a volunteer to start off with I then became a project worker um, so I did all my debt training, then became an intermediary as well for DROs and things. So professionally and personally, really, I suppose it developed me as a person, gave me confidence, um, gave me qualifications as well. So I was able to, you know, go and, and do some training courses on debt, be an intermediary. Um, and then as time went on, I became a supervisor. So, you know, going out and having those um, experiences, supervising people and um, being able to support people and volunteers. Um, and then as time went on, I'm one of the um, managers here now in the office. So um, the local offices has helped me to um, obtain my ILM level five in management. So again, you know, professionally and personally and able to achieve things. Um, and overall, I think confidence was a big issue. You know, starting off at 18, not really kind of knowing what the office was about or what Citizens Advice actually did. Um, it enabled me to know more about my community, become confident in myself to deal with issues, confident dealing with the public and just being able to meet a wide variety of people and converse with those people really. Um, well, I suppose, I suppose wrapped up in the wider operation of, of, of the Bureau, I mean, trustees have an important part to play. Um, but of course, we, we were really there to, to sort of oversee the governance of the Bureau. But we recognised that, you know, the frontline staff that we had there, you know, really were the most important asset that we had. So really, I suppose it was to support them, was um, ensuring that the Bureau was efficiently run, and um, you know was doing its its very best for the the people of our communities, but um, it really was to support those frontline activities there um, by the valued members of staff. I think it's being able to free the full time supervisors and workers to deal with the more important pressing issues, which occur in the office at the time, and provide support for me as and when, and I'm able to deal with a fair number of questions that would otherwise hold things up. I hope I've supported the work of Citizens Advice. Um, obviously it's a really busy, it's a really busy office, it's a really busy organisation with so many diverse needs and, and people coming in with so many issues so generally I hope that I've supported all the work that I've been asked to do or supported in advice work, supported in trainers, um, volunteers so I hope the difference I've made is a positive one. From my own point of view, it's been, since I retired from my own job, it's been something that's kept me in the world of work. And um, and I dealt with children for all my career, so it's given me the opportunity to work face-to-face -face with adults. So I think that's been a positive for me as well. I, I like to think I made a difference in terms of being able to support people who are often the most vulnerable uh, people in our society um, vulnerable members of our community um, and I think also volunteers in general probably enable the office to run sometimes there's often not enough full time employees um, funding has always seemed to be an issue since I was here there's a sort of annual bit of a panic you know, around about April times about whether there's going to be enough funding to keep all the projects going the following year um, and so, you know, volunteers are obviously critical, I think, probably to the running of the organisation. Um, 
it's quite a difficult question to answer. Um, obviously, five years ago, you know, the development in five years has been amazing. So web chat and email, you know, that's kind of really, really you know, from five, ten years ago, it's really revolutionary to being able to access advice at your fingertips. I think in five years' time, I would hope there's not, not that people wouldn't need us, but problems are not as complex as they are now for people. I would hope that there was access across all channels so maybe Facebook uh, you know kind of advise people via Facebook we get lots of queries at the moment you know via our web pages so being a little bit more accessible and just being with the times and changing um, I think whatever happens in five years time we'll be able to adapt and you know kind of roll with those changes we've done that for years you know where things change and we have to adapt you know welfare reform and things um, so hopefully we'd still be here hopefully people are the situation's maybe a little bit better co- uh, issues a little less complex but also um, more accessible to the needs of the people that we serve in. So whether that's, you know, digital or not, you know, we shouldn't be digital by default. We shouldn't assume everyone wants digital advice, but I think just making sure it's accessible as possible to the communities that we live and work in. Um, probably continuing to get busier, more demand. Uh, it'd be nice if we could kind of um, be more accessible to people um, in terms of the travelling that some people have to do to get to us, um, it'd be nice to kind of be everywhere where somebody could walk to get advice. We cover a lot of outreaches now uh, right across the RCT area, um, but I think, yeah, so people don't have to pay transport to come to see us and things like that. And you know, the, the more we can support and uh, inform clients and empower clients to be able to deal with things themselves as well. Um. Well, in terms of uh, things like funding, I think that's very uh, difficult to call it. It's changing uh, all the time. There's always new parts being found and old parts being lost. Uh, in terms of the advice that we're giving, um, in how we give that advice, I think it's going to be, it's already changing. Um, and there's a lot more, going to be a lot more emphasis on things like um, web chat and telephone advice. Um, because as people are seeking us out through all the different mediums, um, particularly amongst younger groups, that's the uh, seems to be the main source that they're seeking advice through. Um, in terms of the advice that we're giving, I think that's likely to change very rapidly over the next five years, depending on how things uh, happen with uh, things like Brexit and um, and uh, well, just seeing how that uh, how that changes things, because there's going to be one way or the other. Um, various issues and I think there's going to be a lot of new um, issues, new advice areas that perhaps we don't cover too much uh, at the moment that might become very uh, prevalent over the next few years. That's a very difficult question. Um, I think what we've done for the last 80 years is is grow, adapt and change um, to meet whatever needs people need at that particular point in time. Um, I have no doubt that, that whatever society needs from us, whatever our clients need from us, we'll change shape, we'll shift and, and we'll adapt. So it's, it's difficult necessarily to predict, but I'm, I'm confident we'll, we'll be what, what society needs us to be. Well, it's my hope that the that citizen advice would be um, still at the heart of our communities, um, you know, a really integral support agency for, for residents throughout Romney Cullen Taff. Um, but of course, I suppose the Bureau has to um, adapt and develop um, with the change in nature of casework and of course, increase in the uh, digitalization of services, etc. So I suppose those will be challenges for citizen advice moving forward. Um, we live in currently, I think, in a state of flux with a number of reforms going through in terms of benefit reforms, um, the pressures of the online world, etc. Um, so I suppose those are things that the citizen advice will have to cope with moving forward and building contingencies for them. Um, but I suppose it's my hope that, you know, that the that citizen advice will be there at the heart of our community because it's, it's such a valued service for so many people. Uh, and I know as a county councillor and indeed as a council, we'll be looking to support citizen advice moving forward. I'm still doing the same thing, hopefully, which is advising people, supporting people, and probably for the citizens advice also um, greater awareness around campaigns although we do lots and lots of campaigns now 
perhaps more work around that, especially uh, given the introduction of universal credit, which is a new benefit into the system. So, and also debt work around the practices of uh, bailiffs, etc. So, perhaps developing that more. But in five years' time, I ex I hope to see the citizens' advice doing exactly what we're doing now, which is advising people on a daily basis. Um, well, I'd like to think that we'll have a society where citizens' advice will be less needed in the same sense that it is at the moment. But I think that whatever sort of society we have, citizens' advice is always going to have a vital role to play. But I'd like to think that we have a society where there are where there's less debt and there's less people um, having problems with benefits and there's less people having health problems that they find difficult to overcome. Um, and citizens' advice then would, I, I guess, would have a role of being more advisory in the sort of more routine areas of people's lives, really. I see it very similar to where we are now, but what I'd say we're helping more and more people as more of you are aware of our services as well. Um, Sisters advice means to me, one is advice, two is empathy, and three is compassion. I could add a fourth word, which is all about humanity. For me, it's making a difference. Um, making a difference to the people that we help. Um, but also make a difference to our volunteers, so helping to change their lives as well. Um, and also our staff, you know, making a difference to the kind of their lives, different perspectives. I feel quite privileged to be able to work for Citizens Advice and to be able to make a difference to the community's lives. And I think, in general, we can make such a difference by, by advice. Supporting, enriching, non-judgmental, non-judgmental, if I could say it. I'd say uh, advocacy. Uh, action, um, and I suppose perhaps most importantly, um, support, particularly for those from a wide range of backgrounds within our communities throughout right Romlachan and Taff, uh, who I suppose may access the services of citizens', citizens advice, um, you know, with queries or complaints or questions that could be from a whole variety of whether it be consumer advice, benefits advice, um, that kind of thing. So I suppose the third word would be supporting. You're not just a number. We are here to help you. Independent, helpful, informative. Uh, I would say vital, supportive, and helpful. Improving people's lives. Oh, three words. This advice means to me: yes. support, inclusivity, and change. I would say so. Support in terms of all the people they they advise. Inclusivity is clearly a very inclusive organisation, and change their their social policy function, trying to get change, getting law and policy to work better for people. Approachable, free, and impartial. All I can say is that once the bureau gets into your blood. It never leaves you. Hashtag proud chair.